if I report on this in Criselda, Lewis can hear us. Criselda, if you can hear me, do paint us a picture. What is currently happening now? Well, these are live pictures uh, from uh, the Bromfontein CBD. We're running battles between protesting students as well as police uh, continue. Sections of uh, Bromfontein brought to a complete standstill as uh, students continue to go on the rampage, uh, demanding free education and free education now. What you can see here is uh, just uh, in front of me the uh, bins that have been tippled over uh, in the Bromfontein area and uh, now some of uh, the um, refuse uh, bins also set alight uh, in uh, the Bromfontein CBD as these running battles continue. Just a few minutes ago, uh, another student uh, was arrested on suspicion of uh, being involved uh, in the ongoing violence here as well. But the situation is certainly not letting up as um, the students continue to shut down several parts uh, of uh, the CBD. We'll just take you closer uh, to these visuals where you can see here uh, some of the bins that have been uh, set alight and uh, students are saying they're going to continue with their action. Uh, they are calling on uh, Wits University to adhere to their demands. Students are saying they want free education and free education now. They're saying that the scenes that you are seeing now are going to continue not just in the Johannesburg CBD or in Bromfontein. They're calling for other institutions to join them as well uh, in this ongoing fight. And uh, essentially what's taking place at this point, the running battles between police and these students continue. Just one student was arrested just a few minutes ago. And um, Wits University, I think at this point, would need uh, to indicate uh, whether the academic program for 2016 will continue at this stage. But we've never seen such an escalation in the unrest here as police have also been driving around in a number of those nyalas around uh, the CBD. And police would certainly, I think, as we head towards peak time traffic, would need uh, to... Um, redirect the traffic from some of these areas. If you are towards the Jorison Street and uh, Bickard Street, avoid this area by all costs at this stage as uh, many of uh, the areas and the roads leading to Jorison Street and Bickard uh, are now littered with uh, some of these uh, refuse bins, with bins which have been set alight and the litter that you're seeing that's strewn just from this area where I am to uh, many of the other streets, to Beacott Street and many other streets that uh, line here towards my left at this stage. But the situation here is still extremely, extremely volatile. Many of the students as well who are uh, staying in the flats around this area. For those who may not be uh, familiar with Bromfontein, you'd know that Bromfontein is referred to as a student village. So uh, at this stage, many students are also just watching in awe at this stage at uh, the situation and how violent it has become at this stage. But uh, students also, uh, if you may just look uh, right uh, up there, that's uh, the area where most of the students have also uh, moved to uh, at this point as the uh, police try to disperse them then they would go into various groups and uh, try and uh, regroup in different uh, areas as well so right now the situation police are still trying to get under control there are just a few streets uh, that I can see here that uh, where traffic is um, moving quite um, quite smoothly, but uh, from the areas around here, Jorison and uh, Bickard Street, the situation is absolutely uh, volatile uh, at this time. You'll recall that Fitz University had also indicated that it was going to assess the situation and um, once we'll just move towards uh, that direction, I see now uh, students are now flinging some stones at passing cars and stones also being thrown at uh, the First National Bank, uh, which is just right here next to us. Students are now flinging stones at basically uh, anything here. Let's just move towards that direction again. Uh, of major concern, I think, at this point, is that uh, students are now flinging stones at uh, passing vehicles, and uh, the traffic police uh, have been deployed to uh, have been deployed to some of the areas around uh, Bromfontein, but 
they're not able to get to all the areas. So at this stage, perhaps they would want to deploy, I guess, some more traffic police to some of the areas where there has not been uh, a presence uh, of police at this stage. The shocking scenes that we just saw uh, a few minutes ago where students uh, are now flinging stones at uh, passing vehicles. We'll take you live there to somewhere where that chaos. You see students are now fleeing. Students are now fleeing as uh, a police nyala makes its way uh, towards this direction. We're going to try and move uh, towards this direction because police aren't able to establish uh, right now which uh, the difference between the protesting students as well as journalists, uh, at least two journalists now, at least two journalists have been injured uh, uh, in the past uh, few minutes and um, some stones also being uh, thrown at uh, the police nyala there. Police really trying to uh, get the situation uh, under control here. Uh, we'll try and move uh, from this direction as there's no clarity. You see many here also next to me are also going to try and uh, move to this area. I see many taking cover here uh, behind bins, anything that you can find. And um, those who are not uh, involved, uh, I guess, in the protests as well, are also uh, fleeing uh, to safety uh, at this point. We'll just try and go a bit closer there. The fear, of course, at this stage is that uh, police are not able to identify any of those who are protesting and those who uh, are not protesting. We'll just uh, bring you this side and perhaps uh, give you a clearer view of what's happening on the streets of uh, Bromfontein right now. If you take a look there, uh, you still have that um, bin that has been set on fire. And then if you move towards that direction, you will see that um, the police are trying to make their way to various parts. That one obviously trying to, to make sure that the students do not advance towards this area. If you're anywhere near the Bicard, Decorta, as well as Jarrison Street, steer clear of that in this peak time traffic as the situation is extremely volatile. We'll leave it there for now. We'll bring you much more rolling live coverage here from the Bromfontein CBD in running battles between students and police. For that live update there, that is our reporter on the scene and she's following the story for us. It is Criselda Lewis. And as we've just seen there, uh, we've heard also that more police have now been deployed to uh, Bromfontein as uh, acting uh, police commissioner uh, Humuzo Patani was just in a media briefing a short while ago saying that they will now tend their focus to some of the areas that are now offsprings of these violent uh, protests since the students have now moved out of the campuses. They will now refocus uh, their manpower to the problem areas that is of course right outside uh, some of these campuses as well as institutions so we will give you rolling updates as to what's happening on the ground but for now let's take a quick ad break more news after that